Today's guest is wearing a few hats at the same time. He's working in business development of My Backhug. He's the chapter director of Startup Grind in Edinburgh and the founder of GM Nutrition. Please welcome to the show, Declan McLaughlin. Hey, Declan, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, Jens, I'm great, thanks. Yeah, appreciate you having me on. Um, really, really good. Enjoying the work from home life. Here yeah. Uh, you can see the stats my bedroom. This, this is going to be completely random. I know this is like literally the start of the podcast. Um, but hopefully you appreciate it. So I, this sounds quite sad, but around nine months ago, I moved into this property. Yeah. And obviously it was the height of Zoom meetings and lockdown. And you can probably tell by my background, it's almost like perfectly aligned <laughs> my head so you can see stuff. Like, yeah, that's um, good. That's always good. <laughs> deliberate, yeah, not random. Um, so cool. Yeah. And, and already, as, as said before the recording, big, big sorry on pronouncing your, your last name wrong. Um, <laughs> that's, that's just a tough one for a non-Scottish person. <laughs> it's, it's possible. It's, it's the same level of difficulty as... Do you remember that Icelandic volcano like five years ago? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, same, same, uh, yeah, same complexity. So don't, don't you worry. Yeah, but let's let's get into it. So be, be, before we go into innovation, your business topics, and a lot of interesting other uh, things we will discuss. Tell us a little bit about who you are. What is your story? Of course. So so I'm Deck. Obviously, as you guys appropriately touch in. My story, it's a really good question. I think it probably should start from university. And it may sound like I'm a million years away from business <laughs> entrepreneurship. But in terms of the context, so I did a biochemistry master's degree. And it was one of my passions. I was always really interested in science and interested in being a bit more academical. But I actually came... Well, the story I'll start with actually comes at a time when I was away on holiday after the end of my, my third year of university, and we just got our exam results back. And to give you a bit of context for this third year, I, I felt I'd studied very well. Uh, you know, sometimes I have these studying periods or, or times where you're not so focused, you're maybe not as organized, you're maybe not on top of your, your work. But I really felt that I couldn't have given any more. You know, I really felt confident about the work I'd done. And long story short, got my results back. And they were a bit disappointing. Um, it was a kind of grade two one, but quite a low one. So in terms of context, it's around a kind of 60% mark, um, which is okay. I think at university, the, the, the grading is more difficult. But I couldn't shake this feeling of the fact that I'd given my all. Uh, I didn't feel like I'd gotten a result. And actually, this disappointment for me raised a big question, which was, is this really what I want to do? Do I see myself in a, a typical chemistry career, maybe mm. going into the pharmaceutical industry? I mean, there's a lot of money there. There's a really clear career progression. It's very kind of safe and easy and potentially quite attractive. And I remember sitting, <laughs> it's going to sound classic entrepreneur, but I was in Bowie. I remember sitting on a beach in Bowie and we were doing a diving course and there was lots of time off during the day and I was just sitting thinking and one answer that almost popped up from this question was, first of all, no, this is not what I really truly believe I, I, I want to, to do. And the other thing that uh, arose in me was this new passion I had for fitness. Um, and I'd always been quite fit and healthy, come from a strong rugby background at school, mm. you know, athletics, lots of running, hurdles, long jump, these, these types of activities. And what was really interesting was the link between my biochemistry and nutrition. So I felt I had a good bit of knowledge, uh, perhaps more than, than other people similar to me who were also fit. Mm. Uh, so it was almost a small seat that started from the holiday. Um, and then this same summer, I was away with my mum and dad. And I remember speaking with my mum actually primarily 
And she was saying, look, you know, I really want to lose weight. I'm not happy with how I feel. I'm, uh, I'm really not where I want to be with my health. And she was speaking about trying all these diets, trying all these quick fixes. And I almost had this instinctive urge to, to, to stop her because I could see her going down this path of um, really intense dieting, you know, hating it, not getting the result, being miserable. And for me, that almost came from a, yeah, quite an instinctual place. Mm-hmm. So long story short, I helped my mum. Uh, my dad also joined, actually. I think he saw the results she was getting um, and helped them stage a huge amount of weight. Uh, so in between them, I think it was around 40 kilograms, if not more, over the space of nine to 12 months, yeah. which is awesome. Uh, and I think for me, I had this real strong sense of happiness from, from helping them solve this problem. Mm. I guess this really for me speaks to what a business should be about. This speaks to um, what an idea should should focus on, which is the problem first. Uh, so long story short, th- this feeling really inspired me to, to then start the nutrition business um, the, just after the new year. So that was 2018. Mm. And this is what I'm really interested in. It's almost as if one decision then lead you into all these different paths that you never thought would happen. Um, and it's that sense of just starting. Because I remember actually, sorry, this is sort of getting a long winded. That's now. good. <laughs> um, I remember I, I, I procrastinated for months and months before mm-hmm. starting the business. I wanted to start it that summer. And there's something else I think I'd love to come back to, this sense of resistance, which I've heard more about. I'm starting to appreciate how it works and the, the psychology behind it. Yeah, I, I was scared, to be honest. I'd never done anything remotely like start a business. Uh, most people, are, I would say, have not experienced that at all. Um, but I think for me, with a bit of time off, a bit of reflection, the, the sense of the year, where it's always New Year, New Me, maybe that was the kick. Yeah, the kick I needed to, to start. And what was really interesting was I found a place where I had the mindset of just start and I know it's going to be terrible. Like my content was going to be awful. My videos were dreadful. My coaching ability, probably not the best, but just, just go for it. And to kind of bring in my other hats, obviously start to grind and my, my day job with, with Backhug. Um, these all came from that one decision. Um, because as a result of starting the business, I, I just became totally immersed in entrepreneurship. I'd go to basically one event per week about startups, about building a business. And I started to meet all these amazing people, lots of cool CEOs, especially in Edinburgh. Mm. Went to quite a few startup grind events as an attendee. So quite kind of young and just really enthusiastic and keen to learn, keen to meet people. And long story short, got to know the startup grind team in Edinburgh quite well. The opportunity came up. Mm. Um, And actually, ironically, they wanted me to be the university lead because uh, they thought, because I was quite young at the time, but well, actually just left university. And they said, well, we actually need somebody for the main chapter. You know, would you like to, to try? And I said, why not? I was probably vastly underqualified, but uh, I felt a strong, strong urge to, to say, yeah. So that was a bit of context. And that was super long. It wouldn't be looked back, but that's uh, the, the beginnings. Yeah. That's cool. So I would, I would like to, to uh, unpeel the onion a little bit because we have a couple of things in common, which is, which is awesome always to see. Yeah. So, I mean, you just this wearing different hats at the same time, which I do um, basically all my, my, all my life in a, in a, in a lot of things. Um, how do you, how do you do this? How, how do you make this happen from a work life balance perspective? It's an awesome question. And it's something I've always been fascinating because I, I, I'd love to share two contrasts. So obviously one of them is right now where I've got my day job with Backer, I've got Stars at Grind and I've got my own business. The other one, which I'll come back to in a second, is when I had nothing apart from my nutrition business. Mm. And what's really interesting is I am far more productive now with lots on versus mm. having just a nutrition business. And... In terms of how I do it, I think for me, a lot of it comes down to habits, but also preparation. So I'm a big believer in putting down everything in your calendar, including your own health and your fitness 
goals. So this could be going for a walk. I'll put it in my calendar. Uh, obviously, my workouts, maybe going for a run. I'm very into kickboxing, so I do kickboxing sessions. And what I've done with my day is essentially spread it into... I run you through, actually, what a normal day would look like. I think that might be the, the most useful. So I wake up typically around half past six in the morning, have a, an hour just to get ready, a bit of a morning routine per se. So I do a bit of stretching, maybe have a coffee, obviously, uh, do a bit of journaling, uh, read a couple of books. And then I'll typically do maybe an hour walk, half seven to half eight. Mm. Uh, do a workout around 30 minutes, half eight till nine, and then into my day job. So that is nine to five, um, really fast-paced startup, lots of big responsibilities, a uh, few team meetings here and there, obviously lots of big projects. And then five to six, I'll have an other walk. So I think for me, that really helps to separate my different hats. So it's almost like ending the work day. Um, and especially when you're working home with COVID, it's quite easy just for everything to blur into this big, long uh, blur, for yeah. <laughs> lack of the best of words. And then it does depend on the day, but typically I work for two hours, two or three hours at night on a combination of my own business and startup grinds. Mm. what's really effective about it is I've always got a deadline which is bed which is yeah. essentially getting enough sleep um, and it's really fascinating because I find that it works in two ways one of them is I work quicker and more efficiently and also two it forces me to eliminate a lot of the tasks that I just make up that aren't actually useful um, so for instance with the nutrition business it might be I want to do a blog that takes a lot of time to write and actually it probably doesn't really drive any business results. Mm. So I can remove that because I can say, well, I literally don't have the time and um, mm. have to go. Um, so that's really, and I think for me, the, the time I spend on Sundays is really effective because that is my days for planning the entire next week. Um, so Monday through to next Sunday. And one thing I'm massive on, which may come into later conversation today, is planning your socializer and be naturally quite intentional about it. Because um, for me, I find that if you don't have time to unwind, just laugh with your friends, maybe have a drink if you if you still drink it, or um, go out for long walks and hikes and runs. I find I get really rigid, and I actually don't do as well in my other work pursuits. Mm. Um, so let's give a short answer to people who are looking for that. I would say absolutely prioritize your 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 life, your your family, your friends, your socializing, your time away from your your phone and computer, and um, also plan it on a Sunday and I put everything in the calendar. So I remember, I think Tim Ferriss said once, if it's not in the calendar, it doesn't exist. Um, and that goes for you know a lot of a lot of goals that you might have. I, I used the same. We, we, we need to share calendars, just yeah. a screenshot of it. I have everything in my calendar, and if it's not there, it's not happening. Yeah. Right. So if it's not, and I always thought that's the German, but, but it's good to find someone else in the in, in not German who is who is doing things in a similar way. Yeah, no, definitely. definitely. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's super important, and, and I also, when I coach... Uh, companies or people in, in, in larger com companies, I, I always say to them, you need to plan. It's, it's not like work life balance. It's you have only one life. Yeah. And you need to balance that in itself. And, mm -hmm. and then you have always waves of different topics that come in and are prioritized in some days. It's more work in some days. It's more, uh, not work related, but it's basically one life. And if, if you mess it up over time, then you will go down. Yeah. Uh, so how, how much how much do habits play a role in that for you a huge part actually massive and for me I'm going to so now we had a few topics we're going to cover I'm going to bring in to habits uh, failures because mm -hmm. one one detail I noticed with my business was I was very inconsistent when I started mm -hmm. so I guess you try and do everything. You try and do all your marketing. You try and think about your your operations, uh, obviously your product, your service to optimize it. There's always a million things to do. Mm -hmm. And I remember I'd always get quite overwhelmed actually. And I'd have these periods of 
doing a lot of work perhaps and video making and marketing, which is fine. But I then was very ill-disciplined about the rest of the business and I found that I wasn't growing like I wanted to, I wasn't really progressing um, in the way I'd hoped. Mm. And for me, I think a lot of that came down to a lack of consistency. So what I've done is I've really started to do some research and focus on micro habits. So really interesting because every day you, you set yourself these very achievable, very small goals, mm. um, but you are totally disciplined. You do not miss a day. So for me, with the interest business, a lot of my work is obviously in kind of outreach and sales and, and reaching new prospects and people I hope to help. Mm. So one of them for me, for instance, is speaking with uh, X number of people via Facebook, maybe adding X number of people on LinkedIn every day. Mm. Um, and that is actually on my to-do list. And what's really effective about it is you do get this sense of achievement, I guess it's a dopamine hit for every task that you do. Mm. And because they're so small, you can do them quite quickly and you feel good. You feel you're building momentum. And I think for me, it just kind of holds you consistent no matter how you're feeling on that day. Mm. So I think you'll probably appreciate this end with, uh, with training and fitness. You know, if you only train on the days you feel good, you'd never get anywhere. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> one three, three, right? uh, I mean, the same for business. There are a lot of days I wake up and if I had the choice, yeah, definitely wouldn't work. I'd go out, have fun and, and do something else. So I think for me, habits give me a bit of structure. So I know, for instance, every day I have to do X, Y, Z uh, without fail. Anything else is obviously a bonus. Um, and for me, this did come from the failures. Now, I think I was keen to learn from what didn't work and where you avoid it. Um, and another similar one with the failures was this time component where I actually very deliberately um, set up my summer in 2018 when I started the business mm. to have the most time possible. So I'd actually only work a bar job as a bartender for two days per week, five days free to work in the business. Sounds great, right? It sounds perfect. No other responsibilities, all the time you could possibly need, no distraction potentially. And I did very little work. It's fascinating. It really yeah. is. Whereas now, I've actually almost designed it in the opposite way. I've got a full time job, which I'm really grateful for. I'm learning a lot from. But it also gives me structure, it also gives me a large majority of my day away, which then forces me to be really efficient for, say, two hours, three hours in the evening. Um, that's something else I'm really focused on. It's it's quite funny. We have we have even more things in common because I always do. I always say you need to have five topics you need to finish uh, uh, from a goal perspective for a day. Yeah. Per day, one one is like your leadership, and that that is if you are in a corporation, that's either you you lead others, but it's a lot about leading yourself and thought leadership. Yeah. Then then of course something that brings your business forward. Mm. Something that's where you connect with your community. Mm. That's that's the third one. The fourth one is family and friends, like you mentioned as well. And the fifth one is just for yourself. Like, oh. what are you doing each day just for yourself? And that can be sport. That can be whatever. Having a beer. Um, so really, something that you just do for yourself. And if you do this every day consistently, then everything will move forward. And everything is like like you said. It's, it's a habit that moves moves on. And, yeah. and it's, it, it's quite fun like that you say this, the smaller habits that mm. form the bigger things. I, I do, do it exactly in the same way. Like one thing is getting up at five o'clock every morning to do sports first thing in the morning. Mm. The other thing is, uh, like you said, reaching out to, to an, an amount of people every day. I do the same. Yeah. So oh, I have yeah. this every day where I'm, and, and I'm sometimes grinding through it because it's super hard to do every yeah. day. But if you if you just make makes like the 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 small thing so small that it's not really big work. So let's yeah. say if you if you want to reach out to five people per day, mm. it's it's maybe ten minutes. It's not a lot of work if you if you know how to do that. It's just if you do it every day, it's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and 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 so on. So you reach always a, a quite huge amount of people per week. Mm. It's quite interesting. So going into innovation, working with the, the, the startup hub um, or startup grind um, is, is most probably exposing you to as well a lot of interesting topics. But before we, before we go into 
how you work with the startup grind and how the different startups collaborate. I would like to understand your way of thinking of innovation. What is innovation for you and what is your definition of innovation? Big question. I think for me, a big part is, is actually relevance and finding problems that are most pressing right now. So for instance, you know, climate change is huge. Um, right now, obviously, COVID and the, the pandemic. Mm. I think for me, that's really interesting because it brings a sense of urgency and it also brings a, a problem that is real that I think forces more creativity, if that makes mm. sense. I think that innovation, I feel, needs to come from a place of needs. Um, you know, it's nice to have kind of cool, funky gadgets and different technology that's fun. But I think for many reasons, even from a business sense, potential investors, obviously customers, um, even resources available. I mean, for me, that's the biggest part. And then everything else comes from it. Um, who else do I think of innovation? I think also what I'm really interested in is bringing technology and old techniques together. I know this has been weird, but um, Backhug is a great example, actually, of how a founder has used technology to to emulate a, a manual technique of physiotherapy. I mean, physiotherapy has been around for many, 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 many years. So uh, I don't even know when, you know, uh, longer than I can, can possibly imagine. Uh, I think it's fascinating because a lot of the, the old techniques from our distant ancestors are very effective. I think the same, and I'm going to put my biochemistry hat on for a second and, and mention like medicine. Because uh, I think if you think about a lot of medicines that are produced nowadays by these huge pharmaceutical companies, a lot of the ingredients in chemical compositions come from remedies that were used like, in ancient times. Mm. So even simple things like maybe using honey and ginger in a drink to, to help with sore fruits, these mm. types of things, obviously lots of herbs and plants that um, you know, hunter gatherers would use. So I guess to give a really short, concise answer, I'd say for me, innovation is definitely, yeah, I feel it stems from old techniques, but you can now use this new technology to, to bring it out in a better way and it could be more scalable, it can maybe be uh, more efficient, maybe cheaper to produce. Uh, yeah, that would be my, my take on it. Yeah. T taking that to the next level, what do you think are companies struggling with on these topics? Mm. I think what they're struggling with sometimes what I see is a disconnect between the problem they're solving and what they want to create. And I, I, I've definitely fallen <coughs> foul of this with nutrition. Mm -hmm. I know that's maybe perhaps less innovation. I mean, that's it. Because I think when you're a creator, you often do it for fun. And a lot of the founders are obviously quite tech focused, which is what you want. You want them to be very experienced and very knowledgeable. I mean, that's the biggest thing because if you think about innovation, it requires so much time, so many iterations, so many resources. And I think once you've built something, it's very hard to go back and redesign it. Mm. If you've not built it with the problem at the core, the customer at the core, uh, it's very tricky because it is so much harder to find product market fits. Whereas I think if you almost like a lean approach, which I know is a bit cliche, but I think there's a good reason it's a cliche. Um, you can build as you go and you can get the customer to almost build it for you because they'll give you everything they want. So for instance, if you're making an app, you can start a very really basic person. The customer will say, yeah, so this is cool. Uh, this, app is gonna, this app is going to help me build a new habit. Let's say as a problem. Yeah. So will say, could we have notifications? So like, would that help? The customer might say, is there a way to integrate it into my calendar so it's always there? They might say, is there a way to build a community with this? I'd love to have like, an accountability mm. habit partner or something. You know, these types of things. Whereas you build by yourself, you'd think, oh yeah, this is cool. Like, uh, I want to build XYZ. Yeah. Um, so that would be my, yeah. I see. Uh, it, it's quite funny that you, you mentioned that I, because it's not just relevant for startups where you think it is relevant. It's, it's in the same way relevant for large corporations yeah. because they just don't do it. They just think like, Hey, we're a large corporation. We have 500 years. I don't know. 
<laughs> 20, 30, 50 years of success. Mm-hmm. And we push out the next product just in the way that we always did it. And we believe in it. So everyone should as well. Mm. It, 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 that's where, where a lot of big corporations fail over time with product yeah. launches and so on, because they don't listen to, to the customers. <laughs> it's quite interesting. So go, going into the, the, the startup world. So you work with startups and, and you, you basically, I guess at least, uh, bring, bring startups together and, and, and organize knowledge sharing and so on. So mm. give us a little bit of insight how that works in, in, in your world. Yeah, of course. Um, the main way it works would be via events. And this I feel is, is the most fun and also the most effective for, for many reasons. So we will typically host a top CEO from one of the big growing startups in typically in Edinburgh, if not Scotland. Mm. So for instance, there's a company called uh, Uni, Uni Pizza. Um, you may have heard of their, their yeah, they're still they're growing very really quickly. I mean, they did, I think they've done now 50 million plus in revenue, um, growing to a team of 100 plus and really, really killing it. Um, mm-hmm. And in terms of knowledge sharing, it's it, it comes from interviews like this. So I'll, I'll have a series of questions I'll ask them. I'll really think about uh, their, stern, their, their story, the journey they've been on, but also some industry insights. So mm-hmm. we get a feel from them about how do they approach hiring, what are some of the mistakes maybe they've made when going to market we can learn from, yeah. how they approach selling in different countries, different territories. And what's really effective about the community is it's constantly evolving and everyone in the community is on a different stage of their journey. Mm. A, lot, a lot of our attendees will come from different backgrounds. You have people who have an idea, who want to start a business. You have mm. early stage founders, maybe mid stage founders, you even have a few corporates. I think it's quite interesting and quite yeah. um, I think inspiring, actually, because they're kind of coming in from a different background and they're willing to learn, they're willing to think differently about making new products, marketing, etc. Mm. And what's really effective, I feel, is the networking element. But not just that, it's the way people approach it. It's the energy they bring to it, which is coming from a place of just making friends and being your true self and, and just dropping the barriers. I think if you go to a lot of networking events, it's quite salesy, you know, and it's quite kind of uptight and it's always a bit kind of you know, anxious. Yeah. As what Startup Grind have done is with their values, they're really focused on make friends instead of just contacts. Mm-hmm. So we really strong relationships, you know, it's real, it's not fake. Uh, help people first before trying to help yourself. So there's somebody you can connect someone else to, maybe you can mentor somebody, maybe you can help them to promote a new product. Um, it's always that value first mm. that you yourself will, will benefit from. Um, it, it's just inevitable. So, so those are a few ways in which I feel it's, it's a really uh, it's a really great community. And the other way to add on to that would be the diversity of people. Uh, if it was all founders, it wouldn't work because everyone would be similar and uh, yeah. we'd be able to add much value. But what's really awesome about the community is we've got students. You've got early stage founders, obviously mid stage, late stage. You've got investors. You've got mm-hmm. corporate teams. Uh, you've got ecosystem support people who kind of work with lots of startups and um, everyone in between. And mm-hmm. that's what makes it so, uh, so effective. So, so do, do, you, do you see that that has changed or due to the pandemic over the last year or is, is it still the same? That's a great question. I would say it stayed the same, which is awesome. And as a team, uh, I'm really proud of what we've achieved during the pandemic. Because um, mm-hmm. we've obviously gone from in-person events is our main focus, is what we really do for the community and everything else comes from the events. And we've had to... We've, be forced to adapt almost yeah. in a, a startup style. Uh, but what we've done is we, we've done an event per month, typically on Zoom. We're now using a new platform which allows for better networking, which we're loving. So I'd say it's, it's, it's stayed the same and in many ways it's been better because I feel people have a, a stronger need now for connection and perhaps for help and advice to, to really navigate what is pretty crazy uh, period for, for everyone. Um, I think that's been great. And I think what's also good is the the barriers are broken geographically. 
so mm-hmm. people can can watch our events and network from Glasgow, from Aberdeen, even from England. We've had people across the world, like from America, attend. Yeah, and um, so that's, that's been a real a real positive. How, how do you see that, um, or what's happening with the startups? I guess some of them are due to the uh, due to the pandemic are hit very hard. Um, is is this networking helping them as well in any way? I would say so. I, I think it helps in many in many ways, and one of them actually is new ideas and how to approach the problems. Um, so we had one guy who he'd founded a kind of UI UX based company um, and we had one of the founders on we were interviewing speaking about community and how during the pandemic during COVID uh, the community need us more than ever because we can be the sources of inspiration of bringing people together or maybe using technology to, to solve some of these brand new problems mm. one of the attendees then went on to create what he called the Edinburgh Lockdown Economy which is essentially a website a directory for local businesses to That's help cool. them to reach their audience in Edinburgh because if you think about a lot of these small businesses, they don't really have the, the technology or the budget or even the experience to to think about how do they market, how do they share their message only digitally. Mm. Um, so that was amazing. And, and we had a great sense of pride as a team to know that uh, we, we helped somewhat in the journey to inspire him to start and, I mean, that really speaks to the, the the creativity, but also also the fact that these founders are really coming from a place of helping others first. Mm. That is mm. it. It's always a problem. Um, so that's been, uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. So how do, how do you take, I mean, you're the director uh, of that part. How do you take the knowledge you gain and the network you gain into the other worlds of, or the, the other hats where, where you're wearing? <laughs> that's a great question. You know, it's really interesting. I, I feel that, um, I'll go, yeah, I'll come back to the Starter Grind one in just a second, but the, the fact that I've got three and the fact that they overlap so well with each other, mm. uh, well, I'm very grateful for, first of all, but also it, it just works really well. Um, so obviously Starter Grind, I learn a lot from, which I'll take into my backhog and nutrition. Mm. Vice versa, backhog teaches me a lot for nutrition, also for Starter Grind, and it's all... Mm. Um, all kind of works together. We started going, the main thing I feel is learning best practice from these successful CEOs and entrepreneurs. And mm. so they're, they're living it. They, they've achieved that success. They're, they're still growing, obviously. They, they've had the failures, the setbacks. I think also is the relevance. They're all from Edinburgh, Scotland. And they're all from near me. And I think that gives me a sense of belief that I can do the same. You know, yeah. they're all from Silicon Valley in America. Yes, it's amazing what they're doing. It's really inspiring. The, the numbers are massive. But there is that sense of, yeah, they're from Silicon Valley. It, it, it's almost a different world. Um, so that'll be one of the short answers. I think network would be the second answer. You know, the mm. people there have been incredible. You know, and whether it's helping me with you know, learning, you know, finding them as mentors, even helping me to connect with other people, maybe helping me to promote what I'm doing. And... So there's a whole variety of, of benefits. Yeah. That's that, that's really cool to see. I, I have I have the same thing where I'm due to the, the different roles and hats I'm wearing, I, I gain always insights and perspectives which help help me in in the other parts I'm doing. Yeah. It's always fascinating. Just just hosting a podcast is already teaching you so much <laughs> because you speak to I I release three three podcasts every week, so I've always three different people to talk to every week just for this. And I'm learning like, like I'm learning from you today. So it's, it's really exciting to, to have these opportunities and then use the knowledge of course across and or connect again in different ways. So how do you see that from a, from a personal growth perspective? It's awesome. It really is. I think for me, there's a variety of factors. I think one of them is the responsibility um, so there's no hiding. Uh, so in all my roles, the team's either very small or it's just myself in the case of nutrition. Um, so there's always people that I need to show up for. Um, and that's obviously my team, that's our customers, that's the community. I think mean, that's a big one. I think number two is, it is a variety. 
Um, if I was doing just one thing, I think I would only benefit from from learning there. Whereas in these three different areas, the challenges are different, the, the deadlines are different, the projects are different. That's a, a massive component. And I think the third one is in each of these areas, there's always people I, I can meet or I can know just ahead of me. So with Backog, obviously we're still quite early company. There's a lot of companies in the similar space, people in my role in the similar space who I look up to. Mm. You know, we want to learn from and almost strive to, to reach. Same for Startup Brian, there's lots of massive chapters with many more people. You know, you've got London, you've got obviously San Francisco, uh, even places like uh, Berlin, for instance, mm. to learn from. That's how I definitely approach from a personal growth point of view. And I think also for each of them, is the goals that I'll set, which I typically do per quarter. And I think what's really good about it is I'll have a goal in each section. So mm-hmm. it starts with going to have a goal, and you just have a goal, back up, have a goal. I mean, that just gives me a, a, a wider um, a wider benefit for, for my, my skills. Yeah. Finishing up with the learning, uh, with with the last question into into the growth perspective. So w- one thing we talked about is w- what you learned is like how to ask questions, asking better questions. What what did you learn? Tell 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 me about it. Definitely, and it's almost two different factors. One of them is asking other people, and mm-hmm. I've learned a huge amount from from interviewing the founder CEOs and and really phrasing the questions in a, a very open way. Um, and giving them the chance to obviously be, be quite specific with their answers, but also tell a bit of a story. And the storytelling, I think, for me, is really effective. I think it, it, it paints mm. the, the point or the lesson in such an easy-to-understand way. Um, so for me, that's been a massive help. And I think what's quite good about the questions is, I think you're very good at this as well, is you, you ask them and throw them out, and then almost just kind of listen yeah. It's that listening that, for me, I've found allows them to give a really detailed answer, to flow quite well, to share some truth. Whereas I think if it's quite short questions and very rapid fire, you'll, you only get the surface. Uh, you don't really get the, the kind of really detailed, uh, good, uh, good answers. I mean, in terms of questions for myself, many of them now I feel are made more positive. Um, so when I was younger, I was very kind of hard on myself, thinking, you know, why have I done that? Mm. Why am I, you know, why why am I not succeeding in this way or X Y Z? Whereas now it's more a case of, okay, so this is maybe not going as well as we hope. How can we change it? Mm. So I think the very subtle word change for me is from why, as in why is this happening or why have I done that? To okay, this happens. How can I change it? Or how can I do this differently or how can I learn from it? Mm. Um, and for me, that's been a huge change. Uh, for me, it's a much more of a growth mindset. Uh, it's given me a chance to to really think positively and just always be an optimist. You know, things happen that you don't want to happen. Uh, for me, I find they, they always work out. It'd yeah. be really negative at first. Uh, we either learn from it or grow or something else, a new opportunity will, will come and, and that really keeps me going. Cool. So now transitioning in the last bigger questions and they're a little bit disconnected um, because I ask them to every guest. Okay, yeah. Um, sure. So you, imagine you could be part of a project, you could lead a project or an initiative worldwide that is basically felt and experienced by every person on, on earth. Mm. What project would you choose? What initiative would you start and why would you start it? Ooh. That's an excellent question. I would say, I think it would be to do with socializing. I think it would be to to do with connecting and deepening relationships. So I think if it was a project, I think it could be, it wouldn't necessarily be an app, but it might be to a coaching or a course that breaks down why relationships are so important, also how to deepen them and how to prioritize them. So I think for me, for many people, especially now with, with COVID working from home in the 21st century, we do get a bit lost in the, the, the hustle, the grind, the working long hours. Yeah. And people have almost, 
made it attractive to work 12, 13, 14 hour days and then went to relationships. You know, I think that for me, if I think about the, the happiest moments I've had so far, they've all come from being on holiday with my friends, going out with my friends, being with my family, obviously. And these are the memories that you, you cherish. And I think for me, it also speaks to the fact that it doesn't really matter if you're a billionaire, millionaire, that doesn't change. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, I really hope it helps people to maybe think differently about their goals and maybe think, well, actually, what I want in life is more achievable than I think. Mm-hmm. And it just comes from a place of, yeah, sure, having a good income and uh, being, being safe and looking at your family, but also thinking, how can I structure my life so that my work-life balance is so good? So I've always got time for my friends. You know, maybe a Tuesday night, I can go out a couple of hours Mm. Saturday, obviously Sunday. Um, so I think that'll be a project. So I think it will come from a place of learning. So education, it might be a course, maybe videos, maybe mm. lectures. Um, yeah. Love it. Looking forward, where do you think you will be in a year from now? And that can be from your businesses, from your personal life. Mm. Oh, that's an awesome question. I would love to be in a similar space and uh, maybe I'll move and um, that's something that's on my mind possibly I think I'd probably be in a similar space but I would have optimized everything even more and actually I'd be working fewer hours almost similar to the point the, the last point and um, I'd love to have a team for nutrition where I can uh, derogate and, and really minimize the time I need to spend um, definitely uh, back over I think a similar space uh, I'd love to see us grow quite quickly and have a much bigger team and we're really thinking about expanding to different countries. That'd be awesome. We really mm-hmm. would. So I think to give the short answer, it'd be doing one, doing all three hats, definitely. But each of them, I'm working less. I'm being more efficient and spending more time with socializing, more time doing kind of fun activities and learning. And and for me, that would be, uh, yeah. yeah. How, how do you keep yourself informed? What are the different resources you pick and and, and get your insights from? Interesting. There's um, the website called founderslibrary.com, which I think is awesome. So that is basically a directory of loads of different blogs, videos, podcasts, specific for founders. And it's amazing. It's everything from self care to marketing to building a team to sales, operations, investor relations. And to tie into the habits, I set myself a habit of reading one article a day from the website. That's so cool. That really helps me to. Mm-hmm. Stay on top of my learning, obviously, my insights. Uh, a similar one is the Power MBA. Um, so they're a partner of Startup Grinds. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're incredible. And it's basically a, a business MBA online, Netflix style. So you can learn in, say, 5, 10, 15 minute increments every day. A tiny amount. Uh, it really won't add much to your, to your schedule. Mm-hmm. And it's everything. It, it's business plan, it's routes to market, it's scaling, it's thinking about different business models. Um, it, that's been incredible so I do that every day as well and the other answer to come back to would be Startup Grinds um, so going back over old interviews the interview mm. themselves even attending and there's a few events I'll attend just to listen in and mm. really absorb um, as much as possible mm. cool what did we miss? What, 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 uh, do you have any topic we should be talking about where, where I somehow missed uh, asking you a question about? I don't think so. I mean, that was really uh, comprehensive, I'd say. And, you know, I really enjoyed the questions you asked. And, you know, I hope I gave some, uh, some, some small insights. So hopefully you Definitely, small. definitely. So then how, how can people find you? How can people reach out to you? Of course, yes. Um, I may ask for LinkedIn, so that'll probably be the first place. Um, mm. So, of course, when you send this out, please don't hesitate to send my LinkedIn profile. You know, I love connecting with people there, and I think it's it's very personal. I think what's great about it, in, a, in an almost selfish way, is it allows me to then uh, connect people with either of my free hats. Um, you know, I'd, I'd hate to send people to <laughs> three different websites and, and hassle them with that. And uh, I think what I'm also big on with LinkedIn is whoever I connect with and I feel we can have a good discussion and, and meet and learn from each other. I just love hopping on, say, a 10, 15 minute call. Uh, yeah. So happy to do that. And uh, yeah, from there, obviously, I can point people towards what I hope can be useful and what they're interested in. Cool. 
Thanks, Dag, for being on this show. It was a pleasure talking to you. And I learned a lot. I have a lot of notes here, so it's really, really good. Thank you for that as well. No problem. It's a pleasure. I really appreciate you inviting me. It's been good fun. I really loved it. You know, and I look forward to uh, recording and listening to your other ones as well. I think the professor is certainly really interesting. And I'm sure the other, yeah, the other 50 plus will be just as good. Exactly. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Magical, 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 magical land. To another place where the 